Welcome back to our Weather Center. We're joined once again by the best weatherman in town, Peter Brown. How are you, my friend? I'm great, Chris. How are you? Good to see you. I'm good. Good to see you. How's your summer going so far? It's going pretty well, and I've got to say it's been been really nice weather, which I'm kind it of pleasantly been. Thank surprised. Thank you for that. My pleasure. My machine is working well yes. at home. <laughs> <laughs> so with every summer, there's a chance for summer storms, right? Absolutely. What's going on with our buddy El Nino? Okay, well, I'm glad, you're, glad you mentioned that because El Nino is a real driving factor in how busy the hurricane season is going to be for right. us. And, you know, not only for just, you know, the southeast like people think about, but all the way up here to the Burlington area as well. Right. Mm -hmm. So what's going on out there in the... Uh Okay. Pacific. All right. Well, as you can see here on this graphic behind me, this is mm -hmm. basically, this is a look at what the sea surface temperatures in the mm -hmm. Pacific Ocean are right now. Right. Now, when you have a really strong El Nino pattern, mm -hmm. you would see all of this warm water heading way over here to the west coast of South America. Right. And that's usually what helps to, you know, diminish hurricane season quite a bit because it causes a lot of wind shear that travels over into the Atlantic. However, on this graphic, as you'll notice, over towards Ecuador and everything in the right. coast of Peru, mm -hmm. the water is actually much colder than normal. So mm -hmm. in terms of, say, if we were to say, you know, see a lot of spike of activity coming off of the coast of Africa with tropical waves, mm -hmm. it would be a prime time for storms to really develop without that wind shear present. Right. Now, what about um, his significant other, I'll say, <laughs> El Nino? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what we usually call um, La Nina is actually mm -hmm. the reverse of El Nino. Mm -hmm. And basically what that means is we see actually much colder water, even colder than what we're seeing right now off okay. of the coast of western South America develop. Mm -hmm. And that pushes all of the warm water way, way over towards, say, Guam and the Philippines and everything. Mm -hmm. Now when that happens, that completely cuts all of the wind shear off that's going over towards the Atlantic. And that allows these big, big, huge convective thunderstorms coming off of Africa mm -hmm. to really start to coalesce together and to form mm -hmm. hurricanes. So if you have a strong La Nina pattern, which we're thankfully doesn't look like we're going to be going into, mm -hmm. that's something that would be a real driving factor in, the, in an uptick of a hurricane season. Wow, okay. So what do we have next for our uh, weather report? Okay, well this map right here, this is something that a lot of people, the it's very interesting to look at. It's a nice graphic mm -hmm. from the National Hurricane Center, and this mm -hmm. basically shows how many hurricane strikes we've had per coastal county in the Northeast going back all the way to 1900. Wow. So of course, um, when you look on the map here, you see a couple of hot spots, which would be mm -hmm. expected. Any of these pieces of land that really jut out into the ocean, so mm -hmm. say Long Island, up to Cape Cod and Plymouth County and everything, those mm -hmm. are the areas in the Northeast that have seen the brunt of hurricanes over mm -hmm. the past, say, 100 to 120 years. And of course, mm -hmm. any hurricane that's hitting even Plymouth County is going to be close enough to do a lot of damage here in Burlington, that's mm -hmm. for sure. So basically, if you're on the shore, you're out of luck. And that's for sure, yeah. If you, have your, if you have your beach chair out, you're going to be going out with the fishes. <laughs> Better look out for Jaws. Uh -oh. <laughs> that warm weather can't be too good for the water. Well, that's the thing, too, and a lot of people mention that. You know, they ask mm -hmm. me, you know, well, what is the really, really warm weather going to mean for us in mm -hmm. terms of hurricanes, especially as we go into August and getting into the start of September? Mm -hmm. And there's a couple of different things that actually happen is if we actually have a lot of, say, southwesterly winds. Mm -hmm. So you say you can imagine on the graphic here winds coming from the southwest or the west. Okay. That'll tend to sometimes push the warmer water back out to sea, and that will actually allow for a lot of what we call upwelling of cold water below. Mm -hmm. So sometimes a really hot, dry summer can actually mean much colder water off the shore for us, which actually can aid us. Mm -hmm. But when you get into summers like we saw last year, summers like we see in the past, where it's kind of been, you know, moderate, and you see more southerly winds coming, like, mm -hmm. due up from the Gulf Stream, mm -hmm. that can actually jam all of the warm water up against the south coast, and that can bring a pretty strong hurricane all the way up to here. Interesting. So that'll keep all those sharks far away from Oh, us. absolutely, yes. No <laughs> need to. You can dip your toes in the water. <laughs> all right. You can watch Jaws and not worry it's going to happen That's right. in real life. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we have for our final graphic? Okay, so the next graphic that we're going to show you is actually going to be outlining how many major hurricanes mm -hmm. coastal counties in the northeastern United States have seen. Mm -hmm. And as you can probably guess from that graphic, there's really not too much. And of course, mm -hmm. the waters are much colder here than they are, say, in the southeast. You know, mm -hmm. we see... Typically, on an average summer, the warmest the water gets is maybe 75 or 76 degrees. Right. And you need to have a sea surface temperature of 80 degrees or warmer to sustain a really strong hurricane. Mm -hmm. But interesting to note, if you look down in Plymouth County and Bristol County, down right. south of us here, mm -hmm. actually, these are locations that over the past 120 years have only seen maybe about seven or eight direct hurricane strikes. Wow. But 
almost 40% of them have been from major hurricanes. So that's something that's a little bit, people think about it saying, well, if New England's seen a lot of hurricanes, shouldn't the you know, vast majority should be very weak storms? And actually, it's not the case. When we get a hurricane strike in New England, it's a hurricane that really has teeth with it, that's for sure. Yeah. So to wrap, wrap it up, bring it on home, what does this mean for Burlington and the local area in the coming months? Okay, well, like I said, looking back at that El Nino graphic, if we were to see all of a sudden a sudden uptick in um, waves coming off of the mm -hmm. West African coast, without that wind shear there, you know, it could be pretty active for us here in the Burlington area, but mm -hmm. the Climate Prediction Center and the National Hurricane Center are actually trying to see a trend towards this El Nino, this warm water heading mm -hmm. back towards South America when we get towards, say, the beginning of September. Mm -hmm. So that could mean, you know, we'd be thinking about all these big storms maybe heading to the Burlington area and that might help to kind of knock the, you know, knock all the stuffing out of the hurricane, so to say. So we might actually be in a fairly good position in terms of that. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Now just to compare to last <coughs> summer, we were in a drought last year. How mm -hmm. are we doing so far this year? We're actually doing extremely well because I know mm -hmm. that we've been following that on BCAT with the weather the past, especially going back nine months, following it, you know, every few right. weeks to see. Mm -hmm. And actually most of you know, all of Massachusetts is now out of drought officially. So you can imagine where we were this time last year when the lake beds were almost dry and everything. Oh, yeah. They're actually all full and there are actually some areas that have seen more than average rain. Mm -hmm. So if you can believe we've made it all up. Oh yeah, the common's nice and green now compared it is. to last year. Yeah, I remember last year it was nice and crunchy when we were out there for <laughs> Celebrate Burlington. It was just like your crunchy, bowl of cereal in the morning. Yep. <laughs> well, there were plenty of nice little floats and rise to make it look more colorful. Absolutely, that's for sure. <laughs> And that's August 5th, remember, folks. Celebrate that's Burlington. Right. Peter and I will be there. And we will have perfect weather, of course. Absolutely. <laughs> all right, Peter, thank you so much for all this information. This is really great. Hey, great. Chris, thanks for so much for asking the questions and so we can get the information out there for everybody. Absolutely. And, folks, hope you enjoy the rest of your summer. And we're going to send it back to